in this lesson, we want to talk about solving right triangles and also look at some word problems that involve angles of elevation and also angles of depression. All right, so let's just jump in and look at our first example. When we talk about solving a right triangle, we're just trying to find all the missing angles and all the missing sides. So in this particular case, we have our triangle here. We're given one side that has a value of 14, and then we're given one angle with a value of 37 degrees. So I know the measure of angle A is 37 degrees. I know the measure of angle C, because it's a right angle, is 90 degrees. You can write that in there. And so if you wanted to figure out what the measure of this angle is, well, you know that the sum of the three angles is 180 degrees. So you could say that 180 degrees minus your 37 degrees plus 90 degrees, this guy right here would be the measure of your angle B. So let's go ahead and crank that out real quick. So 37 degrees plus 90 degrees is 127 degrees. And if I subtract 180 degrees minus 127 degrees, I get 53 degrees. So the measure of this angle here is going to be 53 degrees. Okay, so you can write it like this, or some people will say that the measure of your angle B is equal to 53 degrees like this. So whatever notation your teacher prefers, that's how you want to give it. So I'm just going to erase this so we have some room. All right, so now we want to find these missing sides. So we have this guy right here and this guy right here. Okay, so I always use the information given so that I can get a more accurate answer. In almost every case, you're going to have to round, okay, and just get with your teacher or your assignment to know what you need to round to. So for these guys, I'm going to round to the nearest tenth just to keep it really simple. I'm going to start with the fact that I was given this angle here, which is 37 degrees, okay? So I know that sine of 37 degrees is equal to what? It's opposite. It's opposite over hypotenuse, okay? So the opposite side here is this lowercase a, this lowercase a. And the hypotenuse here is given as 14. Remember, the hypotenuse is always across from your right angle, okay? So this guy is going to be 14, okay? So how can we solve for this a here, okay, the lowercase a? We just multiply both sides by 14 to clear the denominator, okay? So we'd multiply by 14 over here and by 14 over here, and this guy cancels with this, okay? Same thing we've been doing forever. So what is 14 times sine of 37 degrees? Well, if you punch that up on your calculator, you're going to get about 8.4. Again, if we go to the nearest tenth, so this guy right here, I'm just going to say that A is approximately 8.4, okay? So it's approximately 8.4. And I'm just going to write in that it's 8.4 here. Again, we know this is an approximation. Okay, so what about this lowercase b here? What's that going to be? Again, when you work with these problems, try to use the information that you're given, because in some cases, you're going to have to approximate your angle, so you won't have this guy available to you as an exact measure. So I'm going to go with the 37 degrees that they gave me, and I want to think about how can I get this guy right here? So we would use cosine now, because the side here, which is lowercase b, this guy is the adjacent side, and this guy is the hypotenuse. So if I did cosine, okay, cosine of 37 degrees, well, now this is equal to, again, the adjacent, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the adjacent is what? It's going to be this lowercase b, and the hypotenuse is 14, okay? So same deal, very easy to solve this. Multiply both sides by 14, and what are we going to get? Well, we know that this would cancel with this. And 14 times the cosine of 37 degrees, again, if you're rounding to the nearest tenth, you're going to get about 11.2. Okay, so let's just say that B here, I'm going to put 11.2. Again, we know this is an approximation. It's not an exact value. So we're going to put that B is approximately 11.2. So we've solved this triangle. Okay, we have a value of 8.4 and a value of 11.2 for those two unknown sides. Again, those are approximations. You've got your 14, which was given. You've got this angle is 37 degrees, which was given. We know this is 90 degrees that was given. And then this guy we figured out was 53 degrees. All right, so let's look at a different type of problem. Now we're solving a right triangle, but we're given two sides. So if we want to start out by finding, let's say, the measure of this angle A, so the measure of this angle A, what can we do? Well, we're given the adjacent side, okay? We're given the adjacent side. Let me just write that down. This is equal to four. We're also given the hypotenuse. Remember, this is always across from the right angle. So we're also given the hypotenuse 
This is 15.4 here. Okay, so what trigonometric ratio is the adjacent over the hypotenuse? It's cosine, right? The cosine function. So we can go ahead and say that cosine of this angle A is going to be equal to, we would have the adjacent, which is 4, over the hypotenuse, which is 15.4. Remember, we're not done here, okay? We need to solve for A, which is our angle measure. How can we do this? We talked about in the last lesson the fact that you could use the inverse of cosine, okay, to figure out what the measure of this angle was. In other words, I'm going to take my inverse cosine function and I'm going to plug this guy in, okay, the ratio in. So 4 over 15.4. And what I'm going to get out of this is going to be a value that's a measure of my angle A. Okay, and this is going to be approximated, I'm going to do to the nearest tenth. So if you punch this up on a calculator and you round to the nearest tenth, you're going to get about 74.9. So let's just say this is about 74.9. Okay, and this is going to be in terms of degrees. So let me put that there. And let me just erase this. We don't need this anymore. I'm going to say that this is approximately 74.9. Okay, in here, I'm just going to label this and say this is 74.9 degrees. But again, this is an approximation. So let me put my degree symbol there. And then let me label this as 90 degrees. We already know that because of the right angle symbol. Now, what's going to be the measure of this? Again, this is just an approximation. But essentially, we know that all three angles here would sum to 180 degrees, or the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B would sum to 90 degrees. So I can say the measure of my angle B here is approximately 90 degrees minus 74.9 degrees, which is 15.1 degrees. So let me go ahead and just write that in here as 15.1 degrees. Okay, so we have our three angles. Now what I want to do is I want to think about how I can find this guy right here. Okay, so the value of this lowercase a, the unknown side. So what I can do there is just use my Pythagorean theorem. We know that the length of one leg, which is 4 squared, plus the length of another leg, which is going to be A in this case, so that's going to be A, that guy squared, is equal to the length of the hypotenuse, which is 15.4 squared. Okay. Now, again, you're going to be estimating this. So 4 squared is 16, then plus A squared equals 15.4. If I square that, I'm going to get 237, 237.16. So let me erase this. We're going to be solving for A. So I'm going to subtract 16 away from each side of the equation. Let me scroll down. I'll come back up. So minus 16 over here, minus 16 over here. This is going to cancel. So you're going to have your A squared is equal to. If I subtract away 16 over here, I get 221.16. Let me erase this. And let me just drag this up so we have enough room to work. Let's move this up here. And so what I want to do now is solve for A. Now, normally you would say... A equals plus or minus the square root of this guy, right? But you don't need the minus here. You just need the principal square root. So A is going to equal the principal square root of 221.16. So that's approximately going to be 14.9, okay? Approximately going to be 14.9. So let me scroll back up, and we'll write this as our answer. I'm just going to put 14.9 here, so 14.9. And just to make sure everyone knows it's an approximation, I'll say A is approximately going to be 14.9, okay? In some of these problems, you're going to have units. You might get inches or yards or feet or whatever you're working with. Just make sure you include your units. In this case, we're not given any. All right, let's look at a little word problem now. So when Max is 123 feet away from the base of the school's flagpole, the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole is 26 degrees 40 minutes. We want to find the height of the flagpole if his eyes are 5.30 feet above the ground. So when you first see problems that involve the angle of elevation or the angle of depression, it's a little bit confusing. What you want to do to clarify things is always draw a little picture. Okay, so that's what I've done here. And so basically, you can see that this part right here, remember, his eyes are 5.30 feet above the ground. So 5.30 feet above the ground. So that's what this part is right here. If you think about this entire thing, okay, let me change the color here. This is what we're looking for, this height going all the way down. So it includes this 5.30 feet plus the measure of this side A. Okay, so we need both of those, and we need to add them together, okay? So what we're going to do 
is we're going to work on this part first. So how can I find this unknown side A? Well, I'm given this angle measure here, which is 26 degrees, 40 minutes. Okay. So if I know that I have this guy right here, which is the adjacent side. Okay. And I want to find this part right here, which is the opposite side. Well, which trigonometric ratio gives me opposite over adjacent? Well, I can use my tangent function, right? So I can say that the tangent, the tangent of this 26 degrees, 40 minutes is equal to the opposite side over my adjacent side, which is 123 feet. Okay. And I'm just going to put 123 just to work with the numbers for right now. Okay. So what we want to do is just multiply both sides by 123. And let me scroll down and get some room going. So I'm going to multiply this side by 123 and this side by 123. We know that this cancels with this and I'm left with just a, okay. And it kind of looks like a nine. So let me make that a more clear. So I would say that I'm just going to flip this over and say a is equal to or actually let's put approximately because we're going to have to estimate this. If I did 123 times the tangent of 26 degrees, 40 minutes, I would get about 61.8 feet. So about 61.8 feet. Okay. Now, and I could just put FT to abbreviate that. Now, if you're confused about how to enter this into your calculator, you have on a TI-83 or 84, or whatever you're using, you can hit second and then angle. Okay. And you can choose degrees and you can choose minutes. Okay. That way you don't have to convert it into a decimal and then type it in. It's a little bit easier and it'll be a little bit more accurate. All right. So A is approximately 61.8 feet. Now we are not done. We haven't solved the problem yet. Let me erase all this and let's go back up and let's say that this guy is 61.8 feet. But again, I'm trying to find the height of the flagpole, which goes all the way down. Okay. Remember, his eyes are 5.3 feet above the ground. Okay. So I've got to add these two guys together to get my final answer. So we're going to do 61.8 feet plus 5.3 feet. Okay. And this would give me, this would give me 67.1 feet. 